But what's up, man? Uh, just, you know, a little bit of quick, like, background and context for people out there that have no idea who you are. Just kind of, you know, give yourself a rundown, what you are, what you do, shit like that. Um, so my time in the Borderlands community, I was known as the Gaming Otaku. Um, since then, I have rebranded a little bit. A small, It's like a small rebrand uh, okay. to the cult of Otaku. Um, right. Well, minus the. Um, but uh, for, nowadays, I am very little content creation. I don't stream anymore. Um, I've just kind of taken a major step back in content creation. I make YouTube videos still, but I do it. Uh, I do like Yu-Gi-Oh videos now. Um, yeah, I've kind of. Like yeah, no, I've taken a major step back because I was just kind of like I went through like a reevaluation of my life and realizing that I sank a lot of time into content creation. And it really wasn't going anywhere, and I didn't want to still be in like the same state I was ten years down the road. Okay. Um, so I've decided to treat content creation more as a hobby instead of a job like I was treating it. That makes um, sense. And if it goes somewhere, it goes somewhere. So, um, but I mean, since then, uh, I've just been kind of living a lot happier of a life. Um, so with content so. creation, you uh, were once Killer Six's original editor, right? I was. Um, I was his part-time editor because uh, he would not hire me full-time okay um primarily because he would always talk about how he just did, he couldn't afford it and you know if that was the case that's fair um i for i told him for me to be his full-time editor that would need to be my full-time job so he would have to be able to afford to be my full-time income yeah he'd have um, to give you a salary exactly um and he wouldn't he was he claims he wasn't able to afford that um which when I, every when everything started i believe that um but as time progressed i no longer believed that because when things started it was still borderlands 2 um borderlands 3 was not even revealed yet um i don't even think the bigger name creators had even known about it because i know gearbox reached out to the bigger name creators we're, and all that we're talking around like january 2018 if i recall correctly like somewhere about a, like maybe like six months before the reveal about a year before borderlands 3 came out for context right yeah yeah somewhere around it yeah. um but uh eventually it got to the point where k6 was throwing hints my way that he had already played borderlands 3 mm -hmm. that he uh because he took that trip to gearbox or something yes and yes, he, he kept he kept swearing up and down that he did not play that game to his community but he was kind of throwing subtle hints my way like he had played it because he was talking about because we would talk about hiring me full-time quite often yeah. and he kept saying stuff like big stuff is coming for my channel and that could mean that i could hire you full-time and Based on just time frame, I kind of was putting the pieces together. Like, this man knows Borderlands 3 has come out, and he's played it. Um, and he's getting a I, paycheck from Gearbox prior yeah. to because that's how he's going to be able to pay you. He's going to pay you with the Gearbox money. Yeah, and, I mean, obviously with Borderlands 3, his viewership would go up as well because, you know, new game, yeah, it's new game. Um, popular. Yeah. Um, however, uh, when Borderlands 3 came out... He, sl he started to slowly stop asking me to edit for him. Okay. Um, Because that's kind of how it was. He would just message me like, hey, are you able to edit this video? And i pay you for it. And he'd pay a good amount for each video that I did. Um, And if I was available to do it, because I was still working a full-time job and trying to stream and all that, um, if I was available to do it, I would do it. Um, Which I very rarely said no. Uh, there were a lot of nights where I just didn't go to I didn't go to bed. I'd edit his video and then go to work the next morning. Um, but like I said, he started to slowly like stop asking, and I didn't know if maybe he just wanted to have more control over the Borderlands three videos in the beginning. Um, I later found out that's because he actually hired a full time editor. Alex, um, right? 
uh, I guess so. I didn't know his name until like two days ago. Okay. Um, All right. Yeah. Uh, but I later found out it's because he actually hired a full-time editor. Didn't tell me. Um, and if he just told me that, I would have been cool with it. But he kind of just did it behind my back and didn't say anything, which kind of hurt when I found out. Um, well, yeah, no, I mean, you you have a relationship with him over rapport. Like, you, you feel like, man, like, at least treat me like a human being. Like, be like, you know, talk to my face. Be like, hey, man, you know, I, I, I've decided to go a different way. Yeah, and I wouldn't have been offended because, you know, most likely Alec probably was cheaper. Um, if I had to make the assumption, he was probably cheaper. Uh, which is are you comfortable discussing how much he would pay you per video to edit if i can remember i think it was honestly like i want to say 100 150 a video um okay. which at the time i was fine with because realistically if he hired me full time to edit a video every day um that'd be about three thousand dollars a month yeah. yeah, and because I didn't have a lot of bills back then, that would have been enough. Yeah, um, no, 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 I, I get it. Like, usually, like, I was just thinking about, like, industry standards and, like, what editors pay and everything. And, oh, I didn't know, know the industry standards. That, that's, that's, <laughs> that's usually, like, somewhere right around there, like, 3500 bucks a month. Like, okay. hundred bucks a month. I mean, 100 bucks a video to edit. Yeah, no, and he would always pay me on time, uh, so I will give him credit there. Um, he was very fair with the money and paid me on time, so... Um, but, so, yeah, he's hired Alec, but before I knew about that, like I said, he was slowly starting to wean uh, away from that, but he was also kind of just cutting off contact, in a sense. Um, I was under the impression that him and I were friends, uh, because, you know, I edited for him, we would shoot the shit a couple of times in, like, Discord chats, or, like, in DMs. Um, I would ask him for, you know, content creation advice, just input. I, I looked up to the man, I'll be honest. Um, but some stuff, uh, I don't know if it's common knowledge or not, but I know that he had some, like, stuff with his mother, like some medical issues. Um, and that's where, that's where, uh, that's all I'm going to leave it at, because that's not, if no, if not a lot of people know, then that's not anybody else's business. Okay. Um. But so I thought that that was the reason he was starting to kind of push back a little bit and not talk to me that much because, you know, he had that to focus on. So yeah. I, you know, I gave him his space and all that. But as time progressed, even after all that, he was still not really replying. Like when he would reply, it would be like two, three words. Um, and that's if he replied. Um and so I just kind of got the vibe that uh, he just didn't want to talk to me or I did something wrong. Um, but then, like, Borderlands 3 came out, and I was one of the people that wasn't pleased with how the game released. Um, I think the game was very incomplete for how long they claimed they worked on it. Um, now I think the game's pretty all right, but how it released, I thought it was kind of a broken mess. Um, just a lot of issues and I voiced my opinion uh, and I very quickly learned that when you voice opinion that not everyone agrees with in the borderland community that gets you in trouble <laughs> uh, it does not get you. it used to be the standard in the borderlands community was to speak up speak out give gearbox a piece of your fucking mind and fucking move on about your day but then, like, somewhere around Borderlands 3, like, K6 started trying to build, like, this toxic, positive community behind, like, Gearbox. Like, let's all respect the developers. And let's yeah, and all... that's... Go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, no, go And ahead. That's, that's exactly, like, what I was going to get on was that K6 and a couple of other creators created that very toxic, toxically positive environment where... And they did that for Gearbox, but go on. Yeah. You, ki you kind of have to, in the Borderlands community, if you want to be, like, a quote-unquote successful streamer for the Borderlands community and be involved with other, the, big, the other big names, you have to essentially be, be a Boy Scout, as I say. You have to just be do no wrong, say no wrong. Um, and just kind of form in line. If and... you do not agree with K6's opinion or his, his the way that he runs the 
quote unquote community, then he blacklists you and suppresses you outside of the community. Yeah, and I will say he didn't blacklist me or suppress me, but he threw me to the wolves. Uh, he left me out to dry. Oh, and that's what I, he did to me. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to hear this. Go ahead. He left me out to dry. He was not leading the charge. Um, there were a couple of other creators that were leading the charge. Um, but he did nothing to help me. Um, and that was one of the few times I was messaging him, and he was just not really replying. And when he did, it was very short answers. Um, but, you know, I was voicing my opinion. And, uh, for example, I did the Lilith chest farm. Uh, I will be forward with that i did the lilith chess farm and i know that was a very point big point of controversy in the community i don't see why uh, it was fun free legendaries was, for everybody for literally everybody but you know everyone was just like oh that's the equivalent of like botting because those people aren't there for you blah 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 and i was just like i don't give a fuck like they're there for loot bitch that's what i'm content, giving away but i mean also content creation it's a competitive Feel, oh yeah, you know? no, people you... get butt hurt when they see other people popping up over top of them, and they're like, "Well, why, why are they going over me? I, I, yeah. I do better than them." And you know, and I, some of the best people that I had in my community when I was streaming came from when I did those little chess farms, um, which was just bullshit that I was ridiculed for it later on. Um, but no, when I was doing that, um. K6 unfollowed me from Twitter, and that was kind of when I realized he was cutting ties mm -hmm. with us. Um, he unfollowed me from Twitter, and he just wasn't replying to me anymore. And so at that point, I just realized the guy I've been looking up to and that I considered a friend has abandoned me when the rest of the community is against me. And you know what the um, funny thing is? You got attacked by a bunch of... I remember this. You got attacked by a bunch of the other content creators and shit in, in the Twitch directory for doing the uh, Lilith chess glitch, right? Uh, yeah, I got and, attacked. And Do you mind if I name more names here? Go ahead. Name them all. Every uh, single one. I don't know how many of these people are still relevant. 55 is in... one of them. I know it. What's that? 55 is one of them. I know it. I don't know who that is. Oh, okay. She was one of the uh, larger Destiny la ladies that came over and was trying to fucking push 2K's narrative. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know who that is. Um, But uh, one of them, and this was the one that was, like, really up my ass, uh, was Cold Treats. I don't know. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. Yes, 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 yes. He yes. was up my ass about it. It got to the point where I had to block him on Twitter because he just wouldn't leave me alone. Okay. Uh, but um, there was a streamer by the name of DePriesticles mm -hmm. who I thought, me and this man, I thought him and I were like the best of friends. Uh, we would show up, we would constantly be raiding each other, we'd constantly be talking to each other in DMs. And then I started doing this Lilith Chess farm and I one day showed up in his Twitch chat as I normally did to support him and I said, hello, how's it going? How's your day? And I got banned. It's, it wasn't, he didn't even reply. It wasn't the Lilith chess farm that people were angry about. They were angry that you had more viewers than them. They, yeah, they felt I, like you found a cheat code to fast viewership and fucking a spotlight on your channel. Yeah, and there was only one person that like truly had my back during all, that, all of that. And he's been on your channel before, Be Flattened. Okay, um, yeah, no, B-Flattened is a uh, very integral person, right? You know, he's yeah, got a lot and, of integrity. Oh, I've, I've also heard all the drama going on with him. And I voiced my opinion, like, when it was, like, fresh off the press, when all of it was actually happening. Okay. Uh, I voiced my opinion on Twitter, which I have since deleted, because I don't... Uh, I, I've kind of deleted most of my social media in general. Right. Um, but, no, B-Flattened was, like, one of the few people that had my back, and he also kind of pushed back and he did the little chess farms with me like we did a collab stream like three or four times in one month of just doing the uh, little chess farms nice. with each other um and the the part that blew my mind is that no one batted an eye when he was doing it and i was and like you know i'm glad that he didn't get that backlash from doing the Lilith Chess Farm. He uh, got backlash, I... not as big as you, because he didn't have as many viewers as you, but he, he right. definitely got backlash. But continue on, I'm sorry. 
Um, but yeah, no. The the primary people leading the charge like against me was Cold Treats. Uh, Dupree Schools wasn't really saying anything. It was just the fact that he just shut me out mm -hmm. because of it. Um, I can't remember specifically if Cree said anything. Um, but I know that I was kicked from his stream team when it happened. Um, and then uh, Unicorn Sparkle also was uh, saying some stuff as well. But so, as a result of all this, you've pretty much like shut your social media down, rebranded your channel, had to change like you know your whole your whole approach to content creation because. I mean, you were at the point to where you could have turned this into a job at that point, even without K6's help. But, I mean, the fact that he hung you out the dry and left you out there during Borderlands 3 when you considered him a friend and he disappeared kind of really, really shows a lot of his character that he didn't help you gain a platform at the time when he really could have. So I cannot give credit to this incident for why I like deleted my social media or rebranded. Okay. Um, so I won't say that. I deleted my social media because I just uh, realized I was just kind of glued to my phone. Um, and I, uh, I didn't really want to... I didn't want social media to have that control over me anymore. Okay. Um, but And then the rebranding kind of just came with the fact that I thought that my channel name, The Gaming Otaku, was just really generic. So I first cut the word the and then changed the word gaming. Um, but no, it was just kind of like... I, I'm just trying to piece it together here no, inside you, my head. Doing the, yeah, doing the man. You know, I can't say that, that, that this incident's connected to my rebranding or anything like that. Um, that just kind of happened because it happened. But no, hang, being hung out to dry by, uh, you know, the saying, don't meet your heroes, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, K6 was the... My first, like, interaction, not only with just, like, a bigger content creator, but, like, I was fresh in the Borderlands community. I had just left a different community because I wasn't having fun with that game anymore. So I then latched onto Borderlands because it was a game from my childhood, and I was I still, I was happy to see the game was still popular. And the first content creator I saw was K6. So I was tuning into his streams. I was sending support. And then one day on stream, he just said he was looking for an editor. And I uh, I messaged him and said, send me your VOD. I'll edit it for you. And if you like it, I'll let you use it. And maybe I can become your editor. And then the rest was history. He, he loved it. And uh, he part-time hired me. Um, but no, it was just being hung out to dry by a friend and or who I considered a friend in a time of need when he has a voice in the community and just like the fact he wasn't using it to help someone that you know I thought he thought of me as a friend um and he just kind of gave me the middle finger and walked away it kind of sounds like after he he unfollowed you and hung you out the dry like it kind of sounds like he sent some of those 2K next makers your way to give you some of that shit and be like, come on, guys, we got to stop this Lilith chest farm because Gearbox isn't going to be able to fix it in the next few months, so we have to police it ourselves. Right. And, I mean, I know that... I know he was... Uh, he even voiced to me that he had to, like, distance himself from me a little bit before Borderlands 3 came out because I caught myself up in a little bit of drama. Um because i had it a moment of like where emotion kind of took control and i did like a big twitter rant or whatever and it caught some controversy so he even told me he's like uh he's like i need you to lay low because you are my editor you're associated with me blah 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 blah. and i was fine with that but what was after the, i was uh, rant about if you have context for that or was it like gaming related or just like frustration in life it was the community related okay. um this was the first time i kind of started to notice just the positive to the toxic the toxic positive bleh, toxic positivity in the community um and at the time i was neglecting that k6 and some of the other bigger creators were the cause of this um but i was starting to notice it and this is when i first like voiced out um i just kind of i was having a day of just like where depression kind of took hold and i just 
went off um and i put a big rant talking about how there are certain individuals in the community that are kind of I don't want to, I don't know how to word it, how are just kind of dogpiling on other creators because they voice negative opinions about, you know, like a 13 year old game or however long Borderlands 3 was at the time. Um, or Borderlands 2, I mean. Um, and I'm just kind of, I, I started to notice this and I just saw how toxic it was. And when I voiced this, a lot of people disagreed and said, no. The community's not toxic. You're being toxic for calling us toxic, which in a sense was incredibly ironic um, and only further proved my point. But no, I mean, you're, you're making I'm just listening because this is like all like this is K6's M.O. You know what I mean? First, he cuts ties with you. And then he fucking hangs you out to dry while the community is there just because you want the game to be better. Because you have an opinion about how the game could be better. And the the, the, the fact of the matter is, is these, these developers don't listen to content creators until we stir up negative backlash on the fucking internet. It's a fact. Yeah. And I mean, I was one of the people that was super against what was been known as like the nerfing or whatever it was called when the all Gearbox was doing was nerfing every weapon in the game. Yeah, the nerf apocalypse. I remember that. The nerf apocalypse is what they called it. Yeah. Um, the, I was one of the people that was super against that because I was just like, it's a single play. It's basically a single player game. And everyone kept coming at me like yeah but other people can join your game and i was like yeah and the game scales to that difficulty if it's ruining their experience then they don't have to join my game like um it's, it's funny because like gearbox always says if there's too many legendaries in borderlands 3 you don't have to use them and exactly. i'm like well it's the same thing with like strong ass weapons if you don't think like if you don't want to use the conference call in the b don't use the conference call in the B. It's that simple. But you, yeah, but I mean, at the same time, at the end of the day, it's still the best combo, or was, not so much anymore, but... Um, yeah, but no, it's, it's just... Best in slot type of fucking deal. It's kind of, funny enough, it's how I address, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! nowadays. Meta is always going to exist. Uh, yeah, no, for those out there that don't know, Meta stands for Most Efficient Tactic Available. Exactly. It's It is going to be the best possible strategy you can be doing or using and that exists in borderlands as well there are builds there are weapons and skills that are just most effective in any scenario um and it doesn't matter how much stuff gets nerfed meta will always exist exactly. um but so just the fact that uh everyone just want to be like oh well this stuff ruins the gameplay it's like well then don't don't use it don't join lobbies of other people using it I think it's chaotic people that just join random online lobbies in general. Like, bro, you got some balls if you're doing no, that. Borderlands <laughs> 2 used to actually have a really good, like, foundation for people playing together randomly back in the day. I yeah. used to join random lobbies during Borderlands 2, but it kind of got away from that when they started going towards, like, the OP levels, and yeah. you couldn't filter out what OP level you were joining in on. So you're joining in somebody level 72. They could be anywhere from OP1 to OP8. You have no yeah. fucking clue what they're playing. Right. Uh, but no, it's just... I guess we got a little off yeah, topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> But no, it was like as a K6, I had bad experiences with K6, but my worst experiences in the community, K6 wasn't the problem. He just didn't do anything to help. Um, and in a sense, he instilled that mentality amongst the community that later went against me. Yeah, see, I, um, you say K6 personally wasn't the problem, but when yeah. K6 is acting as like the police of the community, and he's running around, and he's 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 instilling this mentality, and people are like, "Well, if K Six, you know, is like one of the more prominent members of the community, if he doesn't fuck with me, then nobody's gonna fuck with me." Right. You know, type type of thing. But uh, when you were streaming Borderlands, uh, you said you were streaming Borderlands Two, headed into Borderlands Three, and then you were streaming some Borderlands Three as well. Uh, mm -hmm. What was your schedule like on on Twitch? 
So, um, Borderlands 2, my schedule was very chaotic because my employment was chaotic. Um, I was working full-time retail, so it was just kind of like, uh, I work whatever days, and then I come home and stream, and then on my days off, I stream. Okay. I tried to stream every day, um, for at least two hours minimum. And what times or, were your, uh, streaming times? The only answer I can give that is yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, it was very chaotic. And but, into the, like, Borderlands 3, you just chaotic yeah. still? But um, as Borderlands 3 came out, I actually lost my job the day before BL3 came out. Ouch, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, I mean, I've recovered since, but um, no, I lost my job the day BL3 came out. So when BL3 came out, I told myself, I need to double down, and I have the foundation. I need to build this up as quick as possible. Um, and... Unfortunately, because Borderlands 3 came out, that directory became very competitive. Um, and just, it was hard to get the viewers and stuff. And, you know, I, my schedule primarily, I would start an hour before Jolts and K6 would end their streams. Simply because I was hoping they would raid me. Uh, <laughs> um, I won't even lie about that. And, you know, it worked, you know, I, I very frequently would get K6 raids. Uh, I would occasionally get a Jolts raid here and there. I know J Jolts primarily is a little more diverse with his raids. He'll just hit anybody. Um, but K6 was very choosy. Uh, I know that. Um, but, K6 you know, that... wanted to make sure that he raided somebody that wasn't going to steal his viewers. Or make him look bad. Yes, exactly. And they stopped raiding you when you started doing the Lilith Golden Chest Box and started, like, kind of speaking out negatively about the game? Yeah, no, uh, I stopped receiving raids from, like, everyone other than B Flattened uh, when I started doing Lilith Chest Farms. Um, I was banned in a handful of chats. Was not banned in K6's chat, funny enough, but um, I was definitely not acknowledged. Um... But I, I was, like I said, I was banning a lot of chats. I was just not receiving still any have more a support. VIP badge in K6's chat? Oh, I don't know. I'll be okay. honest. I but haven't I been in that. I was wondering if you did at the time, like at, at this time back in the day. Like, did, did he, I mean, like, I can certainly any, check. Did he, like, no, no, no. I, I meant like oh. back in the day. Like, did he oh, like, yeah. revoke any privileges from you in the chat or he just stopped acknowledging you in the chat? He, he just stopped acknowledging me. And, um,. I know that it wasn't that he wasn't seeing my chat messages because there, when I was editing for him, there was never a moment that he didn't acknowledge my messages. Like he always would see them um, because, well, also because I had the VIP badge, but regardless, um, no, I just wasn't getting acknowledged anymore. He was very clearly distancing himself from me. Um, but I mean, also, I mean, K6 hawks that chat. Like he, He's basically his own moderator in a sense, mm -hmm. um, but uh, but I'll, I mean that also just kind of brings up the fact that a lot of the, uh, my conversations with K Six, because you know at times I'd ask him if I could do certain editing, certain things with editing. Like I wanted to be more hands on with the editing. I wasn't by any means restricted, but there were certain things I wanted to do that he just said let's not or like let's avoid doing that like you want um, to be more like creative with it yeah you know and i thought that was a good opportunity because uh back then his editing style and my editing style were basically the same which was just take random clips and slap them together there was no extra flair mm -hmm. um which is kind of what you need nowadays in my opinion uh you need to be doing something different than just slapping some clips together and post it um but, you know, I would I would ask to have a little bit more creative freedom and he would avoid it because he was afraid it would affect the numbers. And the numbers was a lot of what K6 worried about. Um, and I mean, I get it. We're content creators. The numbers matter. It pays the bills. Mm -hmm. But no, it was it was very just Obsessive. corporate obsessive and like corporate almost okay. um because i remember there was a point before bl3 came out k6 was trying to experiment a little bit more with playing other games um 
he played, I believe, We Happy Few for two streams. He played, um, I don't even remember what that game was called. Uh, Gearbox released a game that was basically Overwatch. Battleborn. Uh, Battleborn, yes. He play, he tried Battleborn for a couple of streams. And uh, obviously, because it's not Borderlands, the, the numbers were down. Um, and because of this, he created like a second channel. So he'd upload these other games. Um, and that just wasn't working out. And, you know, he would, in our DMs, talk about just like how he hates that his viewers won't watch other stuff. And I'm like, well, that's just human mentality. If I'm not interested in Battleborn, I'm not going to watch you play Battleborn. Exactly. Um, if like I'm, If I'm watching football after football's over, whatever's not on is not football, then I'm changing the channel. Yeah. And I mean, I even told him, I was like, out of your entire community, no matter how big it is, you are probably lucky to have 30% of those people there for you. Um, that's just how content creation is. People, like, viewers will ditch you willingly if they are no longer interested in what you're doing or you're not doing what they're interested in originally. Like, if you change stuff up. Uh, whereas, like, 30% of those people are there going to be there to support you. And I, that's a statistic I threw out of my ass. But, I mean it's not far from the truth it's very small percentage of a community will stick around because no matter what you're doing and uh, here's the funny thing is his numbers on some of these games weren't even bad he was doing like 100 viewers on twitch and like re most recently he's done the same thing with starfield he posted a video on his starfield channel and it only got 10,000 views and he abandoned it and i'm like Bro, the first video getting ten thousand views of a new vid, a new new game on your channel is amazing. Like, yeah. you know how many curators out there would love to have ten thousand views on a Starfield video? My my Yu-Gi-Oh videos get only three hundred views, so uh, you know I'll take ten thousand. <laughs> yeah, right, bro. Like, what, what, I, it's funny because it's never enough, and it's the same thing with these creators. You see, like with K Six and even Jolts, you'll see on his like community tab will be like. Hey guys, I have to stop streaming on YouTube because it's fucking up my views and my algorithms. So I'm going back to like not simulcasting on Twitch, and it's mm -hmm. just it, it, these people lose sight of the fact that they're incredibly lucky to have anybody watching it, regardless yeah, and, of the numbers. Yeah, and like I said, like in the in our messages and stuff, constantly talking K6, it was a lot about the numbers, uh, and. I don't know like it's just my opinion of him slowly started to falter but at the same time i was still thinking of him as a friend because he was helping me out in bad situations um he would occasionally like i reached out to him once when i was having a low of a low day okay um i was at like just mentally in a terrible spot and i reached out to him to talk to him and i think we exchanged like six messages um because he just he kept coming off as not interested so i went and reached out for it with someone else um i don't know it was just and that's funny because this is a dude that like puts out the image out there that like i'm here for you i'm like the fucking like karen father of the community like he wants to be that type of guy but then yeah. behind the scenes like here's Here's a friend that's, you know, experiencing some real life issues, maybe some content creator burnout that could be, you know, affected by like, you know, all the shit that's going on in the community and you also working for him and thing. And he doesn't even have the time to take five minutes to be like, yo, man, are you all right? And like, where's your mental state at? You know? Yeah. And it was it's one thing if like a random viewer does that. That's one thing. But I wasn't a random viewer. I was his editor and I was someone, again, that I thought he considered a friend or at least uh, a colleague. Yeah. At least like it's a fucking peer, you know? Like, yeah, and if it's if someone that like even if you are just a um I can't think of the word all of a sudden. Uh not a friend but not also not like a stranger. Acquaintance. I can't think of the word. Acquaintance, that's the word. Even if you're an acquaintance, someone I know. I might not know you very well. If you come out to me and reach for help. That I'm going to I'm, 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 I'm going to back you up for you know uh, for, like you said, for at least five minutes, yeah, I'm gonna least, help I, you I out. got an ear for you. You sit down. Let's let's fucking have a chat, man. Let's or go. I'm gonna at least get you to talk to someone who actually can help you, whether it's an actual friend that knows you personally, or a family That's member. Or something. I'm gonna I'm, yeah. I'm gonna get you to find someone that can help you.
Yeah, no, that, that's, um, that's definitely it. But, no, nah, just, like, looking back, like, back then, uh, you know, I thought him and I were, like, really good friends. But, like, looking back and, uh, you know, I've, I read our DMs uh, recently because, you know, uh, I knew I was going to come talk to you. And just kind of rereading through a lot of them, it just felt very... I, I started to realize our relationship was very standoffish. Um, purely business. Very hollow. Yeah, it was, edit this video, uh, I'll help you, I'll, I'll talk to you a couple of times just to kind of make sure you're not going nowhere, and then that's about it. Has he ever, like, gotten out of pocket with you, or angry, or, like, you haven't met a deadline, or he's, like, really just, like, run, went off on you, or, like, knee-jerk reaction on you or anything? Honestly, no. Um, he never went off on me. Um, he, he has when... been known to bully a few other content creators privately. So, just kind no, of... he never bullied me. Uh, he never like belittled me or anything. But again, our interactions were very short. Right. Um, that being said, I also got videos to him on time. Like I said, there were nights I didn't go to bed um, because I knew how important that was to get those videos back to him on time. Um, I. I I bent over backwards for that man, uh, essentially, uh, because I felt like I had to impress him, and I had to, uh, I kind of looked at him as, like, a mentor, essentially. Like, I looked at him like, oh, he's gonna, he's helping me not only become, you know, a bigger content creator, but just be a better content creator. Yeah, he's, and, he's that bridge from where you're at to where you want to be. Yeah. And I, I thought essentially he was kind of mel uh, molding me into being a better content creator. And then I was, then I got a little too opinionated and I was left out to dry. Yeah, because so. you spoke out about the fucking community, about Borderlands 3, and like you said, he unfollowed you and cut ties for you, stopped acknowledging you, and left mm -hmm. you out to dry while the rest of the content creators all chomped at the bit like piranhas in the water. Pretty much, yeah. They hit the low-hanging fruit. And that pretty much kind of kind of created like a, a burnout, and that's where you kind of just kind of got disenfranchised with the Borderlands community and walked away, right? Yeah, I mean, Ascent, that was kind of like, that was like the catalyst. Um, I was still trying to do something mm -hmm. but and i remember the exact day i stopped um play, doing borderlands um my i got evicted because i lost my job before borderlands and uh i would be honest i was i tripled down too hard on streaming and uh in, in resulted in not applying to other jobs and stuff like that um so i ended up getting evicted i had to move back in with my parents at the time um but I when I got when I bounced back two months later, it only took me two months to get back into my own place and uh, kind of get back on my feet and start streaming again. Uh, I came back to Borderlands three and it was, I believe, two days before the Handsome Jack collection or the Handsome Jack Jackpot. DLC came out. The Jackpot. Yeah. Two days before that DLC came out. And I just kind of voiced more opinions on just like how disappointed I was that that DLC was like. They were just trying to ride the coattails off of Borderlands 2, bringing back Jack and all that stuff. And Thank you. It was, a, it was a circle jerk of we made Borderlands 2. Remember Borderlands? It's all member berries, yo. Yeah. And, like, I've gone back and I've played the DLC. It's a good DLC, but they could have done something else. They could have just did a random space casino without Jack's face on it. Um, But, no, the, like I said, they had to ride that coattail of Borderlands 2. And... It was at that point that I was like, you know what? This community doesn't even give a shit about me anymore. Uh, I don't give a shit about this game or 99% of the community. And I started playing Pokemon. <laughs> the, the worst part about all this that I'm, I'm hearing is you were K6's editor. And he needed a full-time editor. And he ended up going with Alex or Alec instead of you. And... Like, this was at a time where you just lost your job. You're struggling to find your foot in, in content creation, and he's stopping reading you. And then you end up getting evicted from all this. Like, like honestly, if he just kept you on as an editor, like, you he prob probably wouldn't have been evicted, you know? And at this at this point, I'm too, saying. like like I said, it was 
a day the day before Borderlands 3 came out. Meaning this man's viewership was through the roof because Borderlands 3 just came out and he's Gearbox one of the first... was already promoting him. He was already yeah. at all the events and shit. Yeah. He was getting paid by Gearbox. Early he was access. Getting, he was getting that ad revenue from YouTube videos and stuff. He was getting the revenue from streaming. This man's income had to have been through the roof and he could not have just helped me out. I'm not saying he should have hired me full time permanently. He could have made a stipulation like you need to find another job, but I can help you for now. Um, but no, he just said he, he just kind of cut ties. He just very let quickly. you fucking crash and burn, basically. Yes. And that's 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 pretty much his mo because that's the same thing that happened. He was in the call with me and Lazy Data when the battle pass was revealed to us, and they fucking like and they all just <laughs> let me hung out to dry and not not even worse than that that they doubled down on it publicly and called me a liar out there and destroyed my credibility and like you you know what it's like to be a content creator suffering from burnout and people like coming at you negatively it really affects your mental health and that's why i had to walk away from borderlands for a while i was like bro i just i can't do i can't be the odd man out when everybody's attacking me when i'm telling the truth yeah, and the part that just the part that kills me is like I basically just I was kind of just over it. Um, you know, I moved on to other games. I did Pokemon and stuff like that. I started streaming my own stuff. Um, and uh, I I got to the point where I kind of just moved on. Um, I was no longer like salty or anything like that. Uh, the only reason I even I'm talking to you right now is simply just because you asked for my side of the story. Otherwise, you know, I wouldn't have. I, I wouldn't. The, I'd be... Here's what I'm trying to accomplish out of all this. I'm trying to burn down the old guard of the Borderlands community and create a Borderlands community rebuilt on the ashes of people that aren't afraid to speak out negatively. People that are going mm. to back each other up when we go to bat to Gearbox and aren't gonna be hung out to dry and let the fucking community and content and rally our people against other content creators. That's not what we wanna do. We don't wanna come down against other content creators. We wanna come against Gearbox, but K6 and them have been sniffing and drinking the fucking, the fucking Gearbox noses. glue and drinking the Gearbox Kool-Aid for so long that they've actually acted as like a pseudo police for the community. Yeah, and I, uh, but as, I mean, like, as I was saying, like, you know, I kind of moved on, um, but, you know, I was still in contact with B every so often, uh, cause, you know, again, he had my back, so I knew he was a true friend, um, and so I was in contact, and, you know, I'd, I'd keep up, and every so often, I would just constantly hear, oh, this drama happened, this drama happened, and I was just like, can Borderlands community just go a day without being in each other's necks? Like, holy shit. Um, and, like, I kind of got to the point where I was like, I'm glad I got out when I did. Because yeah, things would have been so much worse for me. Because I would have continued to voice my opinion and get backlash. And, um, But, I mean, I also got to a point where I had, like, moved on so much that I, I actually temporarily came back to Borderlands. And I streamed Borderlands 3 and even, like, a year later stream borderlands 2 for like every so often um because i randomly offline started playing the games again i was like you know i'm having a lot of fun you know i want to mm. share this with my community and all of a sudden faces i haven't seen in ages in my chat started popping back up and that just further proved the point that like you know people are going to watch what they're interested in um they're not going to watch you for other stuff but a lot of people are just like, oh, I thought you ditched this game for good. And I was just like, just because I'm playing the game doesn't mean I have to be associated with the faces that, you know, turn their back on me. Like, I can have fun with this game and ignore whatever everyone else is doing. You can play the game autonomously and not be a part of the community. Basically. Yeah. And and it's a shame that you have to be that way in the Borderlands community. This is why no none of the content creators play with each other anymore. It's because... Everybody behind the scenes has caused so much issues over the years that the Borderlands community has not seen publicly that people are afraid 
to play with this person or that person because this person's gonna ostracize me from that community because I fucked with this guy. And that's such a problem because like a kind of a big part of content creation is collaboration. Yes. Uh, not only are you sharing communities, but you're making friendships. Um, you're you're meeting people of the same mind and like same end goal of you know being a content creator and when i was on the borderlands community i was constantly trying to collaborate with people i would collaborate with b flattened i would collaborate with a guy named crazy chris who i don't think plays borderlands anymore um i collaborated i believe with depresticles every like once or twice um i was constantly trying to collaborate with people and just make more friends and stuff the one person who turned down my just to play one stream k6 and that's messed up you edited for him. You had an actual personal relationship. You were responsible for all his vidges leading up into the Borderlands 3 life cycle. Like, his whole success was predicated based upon all the work that you were put in. And then he, he fucking wouldn't play with you. He dumped you. And he left you out to dry for the fucking community to eat you alive, bro. And... And at the time, you lost your job and was trying to establish yourself as a content creator. Like, he should have been doing everything in his power. If he couldn't at least keep you on as an editor, he could have gave you a platform for other people to, like, for you to make your own money on, you know? Yeah. And the, it wasn't even just like I was hounding him, like, hey, I really want to collaborate or something like that. It was more of I was... Uh, I was trying to arrange something for uh, a stream anniversary where um, I think it was like my two year stream anniversary or something like that. Um, I was trying to make it so uh, for an hour on a 12 hour stream, a different person would come on and just kind of cameo. Um, so That's I only a asked really good idea for a I... stream anniversary. Yeah, and I, uh, I can't even take credit that that wasn't my idea. I found, I saw someone else doing it. Um, but I liked the idea, so I was just like, I'm gonna invite some of my friends to come on for an hour, have a chance to maybe like promote themselves, and just kind of hang out, have a good time, you know, help me celebrate my two-year stream anniversary. Um, and so I asked K6 if he would be interested, and he said, "That's not a good day for me," and I didn't hear back from him. Bro, what? And he streamed that day. And he streamed that day, so, like, dude, that he did that on purpose, so he'd squash your viewership. He also raided He also raided me that day. Oh, did he? He, okay, he well, raided that's, me. That's that, nice of him. Yeah, it was nice of him, but, but I only asked for an hour of his time, and he could have done it while he was streaming. Yeah, no, okay. I, 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 I thought he did it to squash you. Okay, he raided no. you. That's cool, but he still... He still just kind of flubbed you off and just, haha, yeah, we should play together, K6. He's like, haha, yeah, you're a funny guy. The only, the only, like, I would could say collaboration I did with K6 was every so often he would have, like, a stream where his viewers would, could come into his game and they do, like, raid bosses yeah. or something like that. Raid um, boss rotations and shit. I got to join a lobby with him and Mopey, which Mopey's a cool guy. I ain't got nothing on Mopey. Um, but I got to into a lobby with him and Mopey, and I didn't even have the balls to ask if I could turn on my stream. So I kept my mouth shut. But that's, that's like the up. only like that's the only like collaboration I could say. But, yeah, but if you're collaborating with another another streamer, you shouldn't have two no streamers problem. technically because I was in there with Mopey too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. You shouldn't have a problem. Like nobody should ever feel fucking like be like hey do you mind if i turn my stream on and be like nah go ahead bro like yeah let's go because the, the more people that that watch more content creators the more people that are going to be drawn to the borderlands community and be recommended borderlands vidges and streams overall so like i don't understand why somebody would want to not like you know what i mean not and i know like a lot of it like you said is attributed to the fact that like it just seems like k6 didn't want viewers to leave his stream and go somewhere else even though you know multiple tabs are a thing mm -hmm. um and like k6 i mean i'm sure this is common knowledge k6 streams when he does because jolts isn't streaming at that time yeah he changed his whole schedule around because of jolts fucking 
Jolts was streaming in the jo afternoon. Jolts popped off. <laughs> yeah, Jolts, Jolts fucking popped off, and he went he went to the morning time. That's when I used to do mornings with morning, and he was trying to fucking yeah. squash me out when I was doing my Borderlands <laughs> 1. Yeah, so. Yeah, it was just, uh, it was just interesting, for sure. Um, again, thought, didn't think a lot of it at the time, but just, like, looking back on my relationship with k6 it was like very business and that's where it ended that's that's a shame man that's a shame a, like like i said you you kind of really had a had a rough go of it there man you know you were struggling to find your foot in you lost your job and this this guy not only not only did you lose your actual real job but he stopped hiring you to edit right around the, when he popped off on borderlands 3 right man that, that's that's a like i i can understand why you left borderlands and content creation for a while you're like yeah you know what like real real life shit comes first i gotta get my my life in fucking order before i could do this as a yeah. you know side thing i get that yeah no i had to take a major step back for two months uh when i moved in with my parents so i could get back on my feet as quick as possible so and I'm sorry I... all that happened to you, man. That's that's real rough. I, when Borderlands 4 comes out, it's looking like they might be rushing Borderlands 4 out for 2024. Wow, shocker. Uh, but when Borderlands 4 comes out, if you want to fucking... Even now, like, if you want to play some Borderlands 2 and shit, like, you can hit me up or whatever. We'll fucking we'll stream and fucking do some shit. But, like, you're more than welcome to fucking be within the community that I'm trying to build here, man. Well, yeah. I definitely appreciate that like i said i haven't deleted my twitch but i'm very just not stream right now yeah, um you. so uh i'm more focusing on just youtube uh only one video a week um i don't want to burn myself out and all that anymore so. I, I get that man like people don't get it like the content creator grind is is a really really stressful one it's... and on top of that like depending on how you do content creation it can be a really lonely life um i i was i felt like very alone in the borderlands community especially when everyone started batting against me i felt like i went through a lot of depression in the borderlands and then, community and then you it's it's a self-fulfilling prophecy because you start digging your own hole and it's like it's like what k6 is doing right now where you start doom scrolling all these comments of people talking shit about you and you're reading it and you're like man am i really that big of a piece of shit because i don't like borderlands 3 you know like it's just like and it starts to eat to you, it eat at you. I, I mean i was just like am i just dumb it's here very like isolated very yeah isolated. but no like i i got very burnt out several times in the last like four years on content creation um and that's why I'm so standoffish from it now is because now I, you know, I don't have that social media anymore. I only do one video a week. I don't have that stress of deadlines. And I have a lot more friends now that I can genuinely say are friends. Um, People that so. will actually give you five minutes of their time when you're feeling down and kind of exactly. burned down. Yeah. I get you. I, like I said, I'm sorry that you had to go through all that bullshit. And it's it's a I mean, you're a younger guy. It sounds like so it's it's a good life lesson that people aren't who they say they are. When you know, I mean, when when the fucking when times get tough, you find out who your true friends are and who's actually standing with you and who disappears. Yeah, I, I had to learn that the hard way. Yeah, <laughs> sucks, man. But I appreciate you for coming out and taking like we. You usually like, damn, I only got till three o'clock, and now it's three thirty. You've been here for an hour, so I don't want to keep you any longer if you don't like, you know. Uh, yeah, I gotta, I gotta finish cleaning the house before the missus gets home. Uh, okay. But that's why I was saying I only have till three, because like if we were gonna start any later, okay. later okay. than three, right, I, I wouldn't. I, have I'm it. sorry, I, I just didn't want to like, you know, fuck your whole day up and your schedule. No, shit, but... you're, this is completely fine. Well, like I said, man. The, the invitation's there if you ever want to, like, fucking pop by and fuck around and have a fucking screw around in a game and not take shit seriously and just fucking laugh and talk some shit. Fuck it. That, my, my door is always open. And I'm pretty sure B Flat and he kept in contact with you over the years. His door's open for you as well. He just put side. up a video today 
about this this whole drama going on. So I believe it. Yeah, no, so like the the community's starting to actually step up and be able to say what they want without being squashed out by larger content creators. Yeah, no, I was caught very off guard for sure, uh, cause I woke up one morning and my Discord's still open to my community. Mm -hmm. Um because I still upload YouTube videos and stuff, and uh, they all are still a community, so they still keep in contact with each other. But I get a random message adding me in my Discord, and it Shout just says... Shout out to Azure Floof. I know yeah. exactly who it was. Shout out yeah. to Azure. Yeah, Azure's just like, uh, I know this is out of left field, uh, but Morning After Kill would like to talk to you, and I'm just like, yeah, that is out of left field. What? <laughs> And he's just like, uh, he's doing some stuff on K6, and uh, someone mentioned you in his chat. And I'm like, uh, sure, I'll, I'll try and get a hold of him. Yeah, no, because I just remember that there was there is some conflict between you, K6, and the community, and that led to him getting himself a new, new editor. Yeah. Uh, I got nothing against Alec, because I don't even know who he is. I didn't know his name. But... He's a good editor. He's a good editor. You know, he had to have been if he replaced me, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he was doing the, the, what, what you were talking about, like, the more Zoomer style where, like, you zoom in and then it has, like, the fast-paced editing and, like, the TikTok-style words come up. To boom, oh, boom. what I wanted to do. In oh, wait, is that the style that you told him you wanted to do? I wanted to do a lot more of just that, like, fast style editing and, like, that new stuff. And yeah, the, the Zoomer I... style, the fast-paced TikTok fucking catch your fucking attention. Like, 30 seconds go by each clip, bang, bang, boom, and before yeah. you know it, it's a 15-minute video that went by. Yeah, because I, I had acknowledged to K6 that that was kind of where YouTube was going because attention spans are getting smaller. You got to keep their attention. And... I was told no. And the crazy part is, is I took a very uh, risky maneuver and I did it in one of his videos. I did one clip of it and he loved it. Was not allowed to do it again. <laughs> it was a video too where he dropped, I think, a bee and then a rat stole it. And then he killed the rat and it dropped the bee and he got excited. But in the video, I highlighted, no, nah, this is the same bee. <laughs> that's that's actually ironic hilarious and not even surprising in one bit all at the same time yeah no, i uh man now I, that's I just it. that's now that's just ironic that that's w his editing his editor's editing style is what i wanted to do and what i do now so that's that's just Ah, man, thank you so much for fucking coming on and talking with me, Otaku. Uh, no problem. If you want, I'll link your channel in the description and shit like that. I have no problem. Just, like, hit me on Discord with your link and I'll fucking toss that in there. And some people, if you guys want to go and fucking support somebody that's trying to, you know, you know, make a little bit of extra money on the side <laughs> while fucking, you know, continuing their life, then there you go. Maybe show some yeah. love. I will I will certainly do it for anyone who in your community likes to watch Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> you never know, man. You never know. Never know. But man, I appreciate you. But I'm I'm gonna pop up out of here. Uh go clean yeah. the motherfucking house before the wife gets home. <laughs> we'll will do, we'll do. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. Uh, I appreciate it. No you. problem. Uh hopefully uh this opens some people's eyes. I hope so. Later, dude. We'll see you later. Mm -hmm.
Only way. Trust me. 